So that's it, that's Instagram? Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Renaya, I hit this button. Please. Hmm. Huh? Oh, well, girl, what in the world? Mama so good. Hey guys. Hey y'all. What's up? So you're behind the scenes of Real Talk Rebels and we are waiting to start. So I hope everybody had a great start of their week getting ready for Friday, whatever that means. I think I'm all getting ready for Friday. Yes. Well, as you know, I am Kathy Parker, go by Kat. Yay. And I am Sabrina, I go by Brina Cole, baby. Yes. And as you guys join us, uh, we'll talk about a couple of things. We talk about the debate. Oh, yeah. What debate? <laughs> Let's turn our <laughs> mic on like this. Damn, is this thing on? They should have turned uh somebody make off. That would be something that we probably could could ask for next year. Or how many times do they have to go to the debate? What's up, Kels? Hello. Hey, girl. Hi, Bree. How are you? Good. Let me turn the mic up. Um, we were just talking about um the debate last night. Did you watch it? Oh my God. I about fell asleep during it. I'm not kidding. I was just so like, I'm so over all this fighting that I just started crashing out. Like I didn't even finish the entire debate. It was so bad. How about this? I didn't even watch it because I just foresaw that it was going to be bad. And looking at the highlights this morning, it was horrible. Horrible. I felt yep. like it was a child's fight. It was a mess. Yeah, like somebody said, you know, um, the next debate is going to be in the Chili's parking lot. <laughs> Gotta be. I love it. I got, it has to be because that was just, was... nobody knew how to act. We already know Trump doesn't know how to act. <laughs> he prompted a reaction from Biden matching him, you know? Yeah. Yep. But here's my thing. So, why you even go at each other? You know what it is? It seems like everybody's so caught up in pointing fingers that nobody's paying attention to what's reality. Like, we've lost touch of reality. There's no issues that were discussed besides, no. you know, like, the real things that we really need to talk about and, like, get on track with. Right. Like, bad. So, it just seems like everybody was like, who has the biggest balls? Pretty much, who can yell, who can over talk the, the person the most, like that, that was like what I was totally, I totally got that last night too from that. Just and terrible. That the moderator had to yell over top of them for them to stop yelling at each other. And then they weren't even listening. <laughs> it was like, they had no respect for him because after a while he was like, listen, um, we have a two minute rule and they still didn't care. Nope. And even if you have a title and position, I think that's in normal life, right? So you have a title and position, it still doesn't make you oblivious to being respectful, right? Absolutely. And I think that was the biggest thing last night. We seen like, do we really want either person representing us if you can't see another person's point of view? Somebody yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's real. Like, yeah. I mean, people can side with whoever they want to side, but I, I would want representation based on you can be respectful and still have your point. Um, if not, you're going to be doing this around the, the world, you know? Absolutely. And that's exactly what I'm looking at. Um, my thing is with Biden, um, he's not a debater. He's not quick on his feet with, you know, his response or the appropriate response. Trump just doesn't know what to say, period. He just says whatever pops 
and to the top of his head, he just said, yep. whether it matters or not, he just want to make the point that he that pops into his head. So you have to think of it. We already seen what Trump can do. Then you think about Biden. Do you really know what to do, or you are you gonna go sidebar? Hey, what do I need to do today? You know. So yeah. I agree with you one hundred percent, Kathy. Like, it, who who are you really trying to choose? It's, for me, it's definitely going to vote, but gosh, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. but it's like lesser two evils, right? It's like you you go for the person who um, most represent who you are and your beliefs because it's like at the end of the day, everything is political. So yep. it's, it, they lost touch just seeing a human being first. So, and I think that was you know I I think that's what was represented was let me tell on you everything you've done wrong. It was kind of like who had the best worst record. Right. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. He was like, how many things can you point that I did wrong? And then when he's a kid, one thing I say about Trump, listen, kids are off limits. I don't care how old the kids are. Yeah. I think, and then you talk about someone who has fought a war and um, I think it comes to a level of respect, right? Um, yeah. Nobody would want his, his wife and his, you know, baby mama kids. Yeah. <laughs> and his I, I 50, think 11 children. <laughs> you know, the ill things you say, and I'm not saying, you know, either one of them are great, but it comes to a lot, like, what, what is the line that you're crossing, and when is it time to step back and be the bigger person, right? So, Seriously. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, that, that was part of it. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God that's over with. They're going to go at it again, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. One more time. One more time. And then we have to watch Kamala Harris wipe the floor with Mike Pence. Yeah, yes. that's going to happen. <laughs> I, that's definitely going to happen. Definitely. I, I don't know how he did the first first round, you know, last, last time he, you know, was voted in. But I don't think he's ready for the, the, the girl power. Yeah, she's like the her prosecution, like the way that she goes in on people when she's prosecuting, she's she's tough, you know, she's real tough. Like, um, I just I don't know. I wouldn't want to be interrogated by, by her, like, you know, like if I were doing something wrong, but she's uh, I saw the I saw what she did with um William Barr, the head of what the FBI or whatever. Uh -huh. Man, you guys should watch that sometime where she was asking him some questions and she like owned his ass. It was great. It was great to watch. He was all like, oh, 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 you know, like, what do you mean suggest? Like as if he doesn't know the English language, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's important though to have transparency. I think the biggest thing yep. in um, political offices, government, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be government, just in any business is transparency and i think the things is when your boss can't be transparent with the employees it's a problem so i think oh yeah I mean, a lot of people would be like you know that's my job i i rather be true to myself and say you did all this stuff and yeah i quit right yeah. because either you go with it or you you don't so if you know something is going ill will mm -hmm. you're more responsible than the person who's actually doing it because you're standing mm -hmm. by it's, it's kind of like a conspiracy to a crime. <laughs> Everybody should go down. Yeah. <laughs> that goes with anything, just like you, like you were saying, you know, and those are the rules of life. Right. You know, so yep. it doesn't apply to one thing or the other. That's with everything. I don't care if you're the president of the United States. There's an order to things. There's a, a way that you do things. And you find that people think they're above the law. Yeah. And other people make them think that they're above the law. And right. That's where you work just like you know and I can reference my job for is for instance just like if there are rules and regulations that we're to abide by don't try to change them to fit your narrative or what oh. you want things to look like right yeah. and I work in healthcare, so you know it happens a lot so don't try to uh put the put lipstick on a pig and say it's a beauty queen yeah you know fuck her up <laughs> And that's what happens a lot of the time in any place, mm -hmm. any situation that you have. Yeah. Well, definitely we have to get out and vote. 
and um, let our vote be heard because a lot of people think that um, voting doesn't matter, but if the million people that didn't vote the last time actually vote, mm -hmm. it's going to be by a landslide, you know? Yeah. So every vote does matter is when you don't vote, it doesn't matter. Because then people be like, oh, man, see, I told you it really doesn't matter. They're going to steal it anyway. Yeah. Nah, if you would have voted, the million votes would have counted, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, exactly. yeah, so, we got to definitely yeah. put it out there. Even if you don't think it, it counts, so go ahead and do it anyway. Right, so it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna way, hurt right? anything if you go ahead and do it. So not gonna, gonna hurt. Do it. Do it. Sticker. <laughs> yeah, and and you know the crazy thing is, is I was talking to somebody else, and they were like, people are gonna be so lazy and mail in, mail in their vote, right? Lazy. I was, yeah, I was like, okay, that's so, a problem. That's a problem. So I said, look, if you can vote early, go vote, vote early, right? So you don't have to wait in the long line. You think about COVID-19. Um, but here's my thing. If you're out at the grocery store, it's the same thing. The line is the same <laughs> same line that you stand at the grocery store. Go vote. And if you can mail it in, mail it in now so you don't wait till the last minute and your vote isn't counted. Um, yeah. You yeah. still got time to even register to vote. I think they extended it to October something. So. Yeah, me personally, I just don't feel, I don't want to mail mine in. I don't care. <laughs> I said I will put on a a full mask to go. I yeah, mean, five, a full, five mask, a body yeah. suit. And I'm going in <laughs> and voting so I know my stamp is on there. You know, I just don't trust it anymore. I don't trust I don't trust it. So I'm well, like, well, the thing is, is you, you look at your log. Like you can look and make sure that your ballot actually gets counted. There's actually systems for that. So that's the thing is, is if people are encouraged to not vote because they feel like their voice doesn't matter anyway, well, then that takes them away from the process. And what you can do is you can mess with the process at that point. You can do things like gerrymandering and, you know, messing with the lines. You can, you can have the post office do what it's doing right now that's exactly the problem like you know what i mean like if people aren't involved in the process then that makes them kind of ignorant towards it and if they're ignorant towards it then there's room for corruption oh you know what hold on for just a second i i've got ron is sending me um he's asking for the link so give me just a second i'm gonna get back to him real quick because i sent i think i sent him the wrong zoom link so oh, yeah. He said he lost it somehow. Okay, so let's see here. So participants, I should be able to, oh, invite. Okay, so copy invite link. Here we go. All right, we're getting Ron. I think Ron's coming, so. Okay, yay, Ron. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's the thing is there is like an authoritarian wannabe wave going on right now. And, you know, the thing is, is, is I think that this is going to be like an election where that's almost decided like do we want to go towards like a more of like an authoritarian like president putin you know um king kim jong-un like ill or whoever is in office right now like do we right. want to go that route with these men like the like i think the president of brazil too like totally downplayed coronavirus so it's like do we want to you know go that route or do we want to move into this you know other direction and i think ultimately like that's what it comes down to and uh, you know both sides i see like they think that the other person is trying to take away their rights and so you see some of the same stuff but what's happening is like ultimately there is a propaganda train and that's why people are so divided right now it's like there's you know russian bots that are like actively working in our you know th our safe spaces and our, our quote unquote safe areas and that's how i think things have gotten so polarized is because like if you if you take an extremist version of a belief and like plop a whole bunch of numbers to it like you know whether it's likes or follows like things that people see they think that's relevance and they're therefore that that that's a viewpoint and that holds weight it's not the case just because somebody says that there's something in a subway sandwich that is made out of like made a part of the yoga mat well water is a diverse chemical water goes into multiple different things so you can't just be like oh well this ingredients and in, you know subway this and right. this that. no it's that, yeah. that's 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 basically d d you know negating science and the process of it and how we as humans alchemize elements and minerals and the scientific the, the periodic table to like create all these different things that we use in the world you know 
So people are just like, right now, it's like, we all collectively know, like, I'm not, I haven't really checked Facebook, like, I'm off of social right now, but it's like, what I get the sense of is just like, yeah, everybody's just like, this is, this is, this is out of control. I, I haven't really, like, tapped into, like, the quote-unquote conservative side, and I work with them. I don't get to hear, like, their shit all day, because I don't work around them anymore. Right, right. So it's like, it's kind of, you know... But it's crazy. It's it's crazy. Hey, Ron. Hi, Ron. Hello. Hey, hello to- there. <laughs> I can't believe I got on. Thank goodness. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, Zoom has the little, you know, uh, warriors that, that block all our signals. <laughs> 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 we have a time with Zoom. But so I guess let, let's start because we were just we were just blabbing our mouths, talking about, you know, yesterday's uh frantic show of the to be president and the president but let's introduce yeah. ourselves so, um my name is kathy parker i'm you know two-time breast cancer survivor decided to start a wave of rebel action um to speak out and speak up against a lot of stuff so not only for breast cancer but um anybody who's um come through trauma and trying to get through trauma and now we have I Rock My Star, which we are um, growing and growing. And I appreciate everybody for growing with me, with us. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Kat, and my name is Sabrina Wortham. And I am not a breast cancer survivor, but I am uh, here for support and to get support and all of that. So um, I'm just here in the group for moral. Next. You so we have, so we have, <laughs> we have Pat and Sabrina, right? Cat. <laughs> Is it Cat or Pat? Cat, Kathy. Oh, Kathy. okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this computer is not working too good tonight. Uh, I'm Ron Rappaport. Uh, I actually was uh, on Kelsey's podcast uh, a while uh, back, probably. probably. Maybe in October, last October, something like that. And uh, I'm with the Male Breast Cancer Coalition, and uh, I'm a uh, uh, a male breast cancer survivor. I had a uh, I was diagnosed in 2019. I had a mastectomy in uh, February of 2019, and thankfully caught it early. And uh, didn't have to have chemo or radiation. So I've kind of devoted myself to uh, being an advocate for the uh, male breast cancer. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Did that come through okay? Are we getting. I'm wondering if she's frozen. I devoted myself. Yeah. Am I here? You're back. Okay. Woo! <laughs> it it came through, Ron. It came through. Welcome. Okay. Good. Yeah. Glad to have you. Kelsey, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelsey, and I am um, a frequent guest of the show, and I have been I'm like, I've been rocking out with rocking, <laughs> I rock my scars for probably about three months now. So um, I, I come on here to offer support to anybody who has been affected by breast cancer. I am a uh, stage two survivor myself. I was diagnosed in 2014 at the age of 29 with stage two. Uh, like Ron, I had a mastectomy also. I went with a double mastectomy for my diagnosis and I went through con- reconstruction and very aggressive chemotherapy. So um, I was initially in a five-year treatment plan and found out last year that I actually am high risk for reoccurrence through a BCI test. So um, there are specific tests, you know, every diagnosis has its own um, caveats and uh, we all learn that as we share each other's stories and that's why it's so good for us to, to 
continuously talk and amplify each other's voices uh, because we all have really unique stories. And um, I was a, a host of a podcast called the Can Survivor Network. And now I am transitioning into another podcast called Pretty Resilient. It'll be launching sometime soon. So I'm still I'm just kind of taking my time with it and just having a good time here. Um, but you know, what I found was everybody has a story and I had actually interviewed Ron on, on, um, my podcast because it was just really, um, amazing to me that 1% of the population we don't really hear about, um, in breast cancer conversations as often as with the men and how it affects them. And so we were just talking about this two weeks ago again. And I said, Hey, I actually know somebody from the male breast cancer coalition. Um, you know, we should definitely get them on the show and talk about this and talk about the differences and what it and, and what it means and um you know because it's pretty understood that men tend to find the they for one don't think that they can get breast cancer and number two they find that they tend to find it later so the mortality rates are higher amongst men and it's uh, women of color as well. So, um, so as an advocate, you know, it's just, I find it just so important to just continuously amplify voices and, and support people. And so I'm a support group facilitator as well, locally here in the Toledo, Ohio area. Uh, that is where I'm from as well as virtually. So, um, you know, I, you can follow me on Instagram at pretty, at pretty dot resilience. I am, you know, happy yeah. to uh, support anybody who's going through this or educate them along the way. So thanks for having me here. This is our season finale. So I am just, I'm super stoked for what so, we're going to do. Yeah. So for everyone who is watching and will watch, this will be our final show for Real Talk Rebels. Um, you know, we, we've definitely had a lot of recordings, but we're not going to stop our Wednesdays finales. We're going to keep it going. So we'll introduce what we have planned for everyone. I think it kind of can help everyone grow. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to say to Mr. Rappaport uh -huh. that thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing your story because um, a lot of men that I talk to, not only with breast, you know, for breast cancer awareness, but just for any trauma that deals with um, surgeries, um, I know a person who's had five heart surgeries. And sometimes men aren't as open to talk about it. And I'm not sure because I'm not a man, but a lot of times they talk one-to-one -one with me. Um, and I ex always express, it's important for us to get our stories out. Um, not that we want people to be you know, taken advantage of or have reoccurring trauma, but just to let others know um, because sometimes we can associate when we see a person going through something, we're like, oh, I had the same signs and symptoms. Let me go get checked out right. um, because we can save a life. So I definitely want to say thank you for being honorable and sharing your story because it does mean a lot um, to me <laughs> as well as I know a lot of people who are watching to them as well. Um, just to stand up to say this also happens to men um, because people don't believe that it can happen to a man because when you label it as breast cancer they see that as oh that's a woman's disease right um so i want right. to extend and say thank you right um, yeah that that so was could, that was part of my story i was gonna go and get into you know when we have time yeah please that's all i was gonna say could you please yeah dive into anything you want to talk about please well i was just gonna start out by saying just give you a little uh uh information. Uh, there's 2,700 men a year in the United States that uh, get diagnosed with uh, male breast cancer. And we lose 500 a year, basically, because when mo a lot of the men are diagnosed at stage three or stage four, basically because of, you know, just lack of awareness or call it ignorance, they just don't know men can get breast cancer. And uh, our chances of, uh, of getting it, a woman's chances is one in eight for breast cancer of getting it. Ours is one in 833. It used to be one in a thousand. Now, now it just jumped up to one in 833. But here's, the, here, here's an interesting fact. Ashkenazi Jews, Jews, Jewish people of Eastern European descent, 
one in 40 men and women carry the BRCA1 and 2 gene mutation. Wow. One in 40. So I've been uh, actually doing some work with a group which you probably never heard of. Maybe Kelsey has. I don't know. It's called Char Charette. Have you ever heard of it? Cheer group supporter for them. Shout out to Char Charette. Yeah. You, you heard of them? Uh-huh. Yeah. So we're going to be doing uh, some outreach, uh, some outreach, uh, not webinars, but well, I guess you would call them webinars, virtual meetings with different Jewish groups. And we're going to start here. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. So we're going to, we're going to pilot a program November 19th. We're going to have a genetic counselor and we're going to have a, a Char Charette person. And then I'm going to be speaking about male breast cancer. So we're starting to, and we're also going to be hopefully doing something with cancer care. Have you heard of them? Yes. Okay. So, so I've taken this, you know, I started, I started out, you know, like Kelsey would tell you, I mean, I, I, this was all new to me yeah. and now it's like mushrooming. I'm meeting all these people from all over. So it's kind of neat, you know, and we're helping people. And I started a virtual uh, communication support group on Wednesday nights through the ANCAN network. I don't know if you heard of Answer Cancer. Have you heard of them? Answer Cancer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm working with them. And he has about... 11 to 15 different groups uh, that he does. You can, you can check them out at ancan.org. And some of it's breast cancer, some of it's prostate cancer, uh, it's rare diseases, sarcoidosis, things like that. So okay. kind, kind of interesting. And um, so anyway, I was gonna just mention to your, I, how, how many people are actually watching this? I'm just curious how big the audience is. Um, I have 3,000 plus followers and on Facebook, I have like 5,000. So after everybody goes through watching the views, we'll say 8,000 people maybe. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't, <laughs> I had no idea, but that's great. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I was diagnosed and uh, I found out what it's like to be uh, what we call a blue dot in a sea of pink. And it all started uh, when I found my, uh, my nipple started retracting. And uh, I thought I hit myself with a car door, door jam or whatever. And it didn't, it wasn't getting any better and it was starting to, to really retract. So I looked up the symptoms of uh, male breast cancer. And of course, that was one of the symptoms. And so I went in, I showed it to my wife and my wife immediately said, oh, you're gonna get a mammogram. So <laughs> I went to the uh, Women's Breast Center here and, uh, and that's when I got my first indoctrination of what it's like to have breast cancer being a man. It's totally different than being a woman. Uh, you know, when pink gowns and, answering questions like when was your last menstrual period and things like that. And so that was my first, they called my name, my last name. I went up to the, to go to, to, to be seen. And they said, no, we, we need your wife. And I showed them my white bracelet on my hand. And, oh, okay. Hold on. We got to get you a special room. So, so anyway, that was, that was my first indoctrination uh, into it. But what really got me stuck, well, they, 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 did, they, did, they did the mammogram. They, they thought it was maybe scar tissue. And then they did a, a core needle biopsy. And they, they said it was, you know, I found out a few days later that it was cancer. And, uh, and that, was, that was my, you know, my introduction into being a blue dot in a, in a sea of pink. And what really got me started with the advocacy thing is uh, my surgery was going to be on February 8th and I needed to have some dental work done. Uh, I needed to have a crown put in and the surgeon told me, get the crown put in before you have the mastectomy. We really don't want you going through dental, you know, dental surgery, you know, after that. 
So I told my dentist, I said, hey, I'm having cancer surgery. This didn't say breast cancer. I said, cancer surgery. Could you, you think you could maybe uh, help me out and get, get the crown put in before I have my surgery? And they said, we'll do our best. Anyway, they called me the day before my surgery and they said, well, your crown's in, can you come in? When can you come in? I said, come in anytime you want me. So I came in and I went to sit in the dentist chair and the dental uh, technician, their assistants, said to me, I understand you're having cancer surgery tomorrow. I said, yeah. And she said, what kind of cancer? And I said, breast cancer. And she just started howling, laughing. I mean, she was just like having a, just having a big belly laugh. And she said, oh, of course you're kidding. And I said, no, I'm not. And, and <laughs> you know, you should have seen her face after that. <laughs> and that's when, that's when the embarrassment went to empowerment and the pain or, or the, turned into passion. And I said, okay, fine. When I get through with this, I'm going to have to advocate for this because people have to know, you know, right. men have breasts too. And yeah, right. it's possible. So that's how I got in, you know, in, into the advocacy. And so, um, Ron, if I could backtrack a little bit, so we're very insensitive, right? I think a lot of times, um, and I say we because it's, it's a community, it's, it's, it's a, a global problem, right? And I think we, and I had this conversation before, I think we set men up a lot of times with not being able to share something so private and so sacred because it's kind of like, you're kind of like shunned. And like you said, like the, the nurse made fun of you a little bit. It's kind of the same thing that women go through when you're young, you know, and then you're told, oh, you're too young to have breast cancer. That's definitely not breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It's like we have to change something medically and um, as well as the environment Definitely. because it, 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 anything can happen to anyone. So right. I think change how people think, period, and where it's just not, oh, this can't happen to us because we're these people and you're that person. It's like, no, anything can happen at any time. Um, and we all can be disabled at any moment. And I think everybody who comes to the show, definitely we don't consider ourselves being disabled, but we are, you know? And I think when we have that mindset to say, man, a disability can happen to any of us. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's really why I started I Rock My Scars, because I want people to speak out and just say, listen, we are strong, we are warriors, we do fight, but man, at times like this, we don't want to fight. You know, we want sympathy, we want empathy. You're a nurse, you're a receptionist at a place where you're providing this care and then you're making someone feel less than a human being. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I love the fact that um, Kelsey brought you on um, for people to see that there are men who have breast cancer and that you're an advocate. Because you know how I found out that men have men can get breast cancer? I was younger watching a show called Oz. And one of the characters ended up with breast cancer. And he was in jail and he was so embarrassed because he, they told him he has breast cancer. He kept yelling, you know, I don't have breast, I have a chest. So I went to looking it up and I was like, really? You know, men can get breast cancer because initially I thought it was just a plot on the show that they were saying that this man, you know, had breast cancer. And I think that the dental assistant, I don't, I'm glad that it empowered you instead of truly embarrassing you because it was her ignorance that made you right. be what you're doing now. Right. Well, well it I was, that. yeah, yeah, it, it was almost like a sign from above, right. like this is happening for a reason, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, 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 and other things that during my treatment, um, surgery and treatment, I was getting other signs that I, that I, that I felt things were happening for a reason. And, uh, yeah. and I'm glad to be here. I'm, I, I, you know, uh, I do this virtual group. Uh, I started the uh, the support group. It's it's slow going. We don't get a lot of guys, uh, and, and it's it, it's hard. You know, uh, guys just for some reason 
they don't like to talk about it that much and things like that. But uh, you know, we're still plugging away, and we're and, and we're getting more more and more guys as as we go along. So, but yeah, it, it it is difficult. So when I do my advocacy, I've actually done advocacy uh, with women's breast cancer support groups, where I reach the women, and then they tell their husbands, and and, and that seems that seems to work real well. Yeah. So. And I the most important thing is kind of like uh sometimes what we think is our plan doesn't work out but you find your niche and and that is it may be through a woman saying like hey this can happen to you too bro come on get, go to the doctor <laughs> go get that checked out let's make yeah. sure and i think no matter how people get the information it's just knowing ron that you are there so if it does happen they can reach out to you because again people when you don't have resources that feel like resources are out there, you feel alone. And a lot of people die alone. I can't tell people enough. Depression hits and you're alone, right? And if one person tonight is watching this, <laughs> to know that you're not alone and that, Ron, you have a group, say it again, just so people know your group so they can tune in and reach out and, and what's your Instagram, Facebook, whatever you have so people could reach out to you. Okay. Uh so you can reach you can reach uh, us by simply going on Mayo Breast Cancer Coalition dot org, and we do send out emails uh, for the virtual group. And uh, I guess I could put it in the chat box, right? Is there a chat yeah, box. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, let me. Let, let me put that in the chat box. Yeah, because we'll put it in the I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, I said we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, so it's uh, it's going to be, and, and I'll put my, my contact information in as well. So uh, I'll put a link for that. And uh, it meets every Wednesday, uh, the fourth Wednesday of every month at 8 o'clock Eastern on the ANCAN platform. And the nice thing is uh, any man who has breast cancer can join join in and you can dial in. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, matter of fact, Kelsey, I have you on the list so you'll be getting the email and you can forward it to whoever yeah. you want. And, who, and, and those men that wanna join, they can, they can actually just call in or whatever. They don't even have to show their face. And, and that's fine too. So it's a drop in thing. It's peer to peer. Uh, there's no professional doctors or anything. It's just male breast cancer survivors or thrivers, whatever you want to call us. Uh, and, and, and we talk one on one. We don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. That's the only two things, you know, that, that we don't talk about. Anything else, fine. And uh, so, yeah, it's. I think I think uh, I think it's very worthwhile, and I think uh, it will mushroom. So, so Ron, not that. So, this show is not only to talk about breast cancer, right? Tell people who you are beyond breast cancer. Uh, well, I am retired. I was a uh, pharmacist for many years, and. Uh, do a lot of traveling. Even with COVID, I decided uh, that I wasn't going to give into that. So we just actually did a trip and we went out to uh, Utah and we did okay. like five national parks out there. And uh, so that was fun. And we went to West Virginia. We live in North Florida. So we did a car trip to West Virginia. So uh, I'm basically retired. I'm traveling. Uh, working out, that type of thing, uh, yeah. and doing the advocacy, which is much, yeah. almost mushrooming into a full-time job, the way it's going. Right, and I was gonna say, it definitely could turn into a, a side hustle or a full-time job. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no money involved, believe me. Not, I wouldn't take any money, but uh, I also was uh, work with the American Cancer Society here in Jacksonville, and I was a real man, where's pink? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, so I did that last year, 
and uh, trying to help them out this year because uh, according to them, their donations are really, it's really hurting with the COVID. Yeah. They've had to cut their, they've had to cut their research in half. Wow. So, not good. Yeah. And, right. And I was going to say, that's important for us to get that out there. So if it's something that we can do at I Rock My Scars, let us know. We'll team up. If it's even writing grants or making people more aware, um, because we do want to extend our services to um, other populations. So, um, yeah. Sure. So, when did you decide that you were going to be a rebel of an advocate <laughs> for your cause? Was it going through the process or was it at your initial diagnosis? Uh, I would say it was at the moment that, uh, well, I'll tell you what happened. I, okay, so when I got the diagnosis, it was like somebody hit me over the head with a sledgehammer, you know, like you got cancer, you know, right. wow. You know, this is like big time, you know, you know, I'm, I don't know, you know, what stage is it? Uh, do I need chemo? Do I need radiation? My first thought was laying in bed, emaciated, uh, with a bald head. Okay, I don't know. That's just the way I, people yeah. think I can't, right. you know. Right. And I'm trying to think of my train of thought here. So, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Say that again. When did you decide to be this rebel for a cause? It sounds like you are a traveler and you just a free spirit. When did you decide to just put, put your rebel cape on and say, I'm going to tell the world and I'm going to be this person and I'm going to fight cancer, kill it. It's not going to kill me. When did you come, come about that, that phase of your life? Well, I would say when that, when that dental technician, you know, uh, said what she said, that kind of, that sparked it. I tell you, yeah, so, so I was gonna tell you, when I got hit over the head with a diagnosis, I didn't have anybody to talk to, okay, other than my wife and family. And I usually go swimming at, at a club down here, at a, you know, at that gym type thing. And there's a guy that I swim with, and he, he hadn't seen me for a couple of weeks. And he said, hey, how come, how come I haven't seen you? And I just took him to the side. And that was at, at the point where, you know, I really wasn't comfortable with telling people and all that. And I said, well, you know, my nipple was uh, retracting. And I didn't have to say anything else. And he said, oh, you have male breast cancer. And I said, how did you know that? He said, I have a friend in upstate New York who has it, who had it. And let me put you in touch with him. So I called the guy up. I said, there's another guy out there like this, you know, because there's not that many. And so I got him, I, I called him up and he kind of talked to me and he said, hey, you know, you're not going to die tomorrow. And, you know, he, he comforted me through the, through the process. And um, so that's, uh, that helped me out. Then, then when I Googled uh, male breast cancer, I came across the Male Breast Cancer Coalition. And I said, wow, there's an organization out there. So I emailed my name and my email address and figured, okay, you know, hopefully I'll hear from them. Well, about 30 minutes later, there's a lady on the other end calls me up from Kansas City and her name is Peggy Miller. And she, she said, uh, I'm Peggy Miller from the Male Breast Cancer Coalition. And uh, welcome to the family you never thought you had. And she said, we're gonna, you're part of the family now. Her, her son was diagnosed, his name is Brett, and he, uh, Brett Miller, and he's head of the Brett Miller 1T Foundation out in Kansas City, which is part of the Male Breast Cancer Coalition. He was uh, 17 years old, he had a, uh, he felt that that cyst type thing around his nipple. The doctors uh, messed around, screwed around with him. They told him it was a cyst. They told him he, uh, it, it was part of maturing. And they didn't, you know, they didn't do anything for him. 
And seven years later, okay, 17, now he's 24, his nipple starts discharging fluid. So he goes in and he says, look. And uh, so they go, oh, okay. So, you know, now they finally, they did something. And, he, and they, they diagnosed him with breast cancer. And they told Peggy, his mother, you know, we're going to open him up. We're going to do surgery, but chances are it's probably pretty far gone by now. And uh, lo and behold, they opened him up and the whole thing stayed where it was. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. Oh, and he had the mastectomy. He went through chemo. And now he's about 34 years old. And he, they just had a, a child about a year ago. So, yeah. Oh, so, uh, they, his, so there's a, I'm just trying to tell you this kind of interesting. Male Breast Cancer Coalition was actually started by women. There was a woman in New York named uh, Sherry Ambrose. And she knew yeah, several, she several. Me <laughs> you know like I just, I actually just met her on a call last week. So really? yeah, because yeah, we're working with Marianne uh, Sarsic. So it's <laughs> such a small world that Sherry started that. <laughs> yeah. So Sherry knew, I think five guys in, New, in the New York City area who had breast, male breast cancer. And most of them just got so depressed and, and they felt so emasculated, you know, uh, from, from having it that, that they passed away. And, and it really, you know, so she started something called the Blue Wave. And then she's on the internet one day and she's, she sees the, uh, the, the thing, the article on the, on, on the internet about Brett out in Kansas City. So she calls Peggy up. And the two of them got together and started talking. And then they started the Male Breast Cancer Coalition, which I think is kind of interesting how two women started the Male Breast Cancer Coalition. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of interesting. What? So, yeah. I, so you, you gave me a lot of information. I'm like, what? <laughs> that was a lot. You know, I actually, I have a question. I have a question for him. Um, yeah. So, so for people that are, you know, that are listening to this and are like, oh my gosh, what can I do? Um, so in men commonly, um, what is, what are some common trends in male breast cancer? Uh, what do you mean by trends? Like, like as far as um, symptoms, uh, symptoms go, like what are some common threads and common trends that you you hear without obviously, you know, you don't want any names, things like that, you know, but I mean, it's like, for instance, like your nipple was retracting, like that was a problem that I had. I had an inverted nipple that no matter what, it wouldn't come back out, no matter how cold it was, no matter if I put ice on it, whatever, but it would just, it was just inverted. So you had that as well. So right. what I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I just want to show you guys something. I'm gonna put it up to my camera. I don't know if it's gonna go through or not. But this is a breast self-exam card that people can get off our website, Male Breast Cancer Co Male Breast Cancer Coalition.org. I don't know if you can see it. Is it coming through? Yes. Back it up. Yep. Okay. We can see it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. This is put out by Cancer Hub along with us and a couple other groups. And it's actually in like 50 or 60 languages throughout the world. We distribute these. And the signs and symptoms uh, are on the card as well as how to do the, the self-breast exam. And it, again, the sign, one of the signs and symptoms is a painless lump or thickening in the breast tissue, uh, changes to the skin covering your breast, such as dimpling, wrinkling, redness, or scaling, uh, a, a, a discharge from, from the nipple, and uh, Changes again to the nipple, uh, such as redness, or the nipple begins to turn inward, which is what happened to me. So, and you can also have have it under your arm too. You can have That's pain right. under your arm. So, uh, it's important that the people listening uh, pass this information on, you know, to, uh, to to the men in their family and, and their friends. And you know what I do is um, even when I have a workman here uh, at the house, 
uh, I had one the other day. Uh, usually the young guys, uh, when they're all done with their work, <laughs> I say to them, uh, have you ever heard of male breast cancer? And they look at me like a lot, well, some, some, some heard of it, but a lot of them go, what's that? No, men don't get, men, men don't get breast cancer. And then I give them, the, I give them a packet of information and I say, Hey, look, uh, you know, read it and pass it on. And yeah, they're, they're very thankful, uh, you know, to get that information. So, and, and I've done, I've done advocacy work, uh, at different health fairs and, uh, uh, like we had a, a big Donna run. Are you familiar with the Donna? It's called the Donna uh, Breast Cancer, National Breast Cancer Marathon. Uh, it's, it's pretty big. We get about 10, 000, 10, 10 or 20,000 runners a year. And it, it raises money for Mayo Clinic down here for breast cancer uh, research. And what I, what I noticed was uh, I, I was manning the booth giving out the, this breast cancer information and maybe you guys can expound on this. At first I was just handing out the information and you know, people were passing by and they, you know, they weren't paying a whole lot of attention. And then I don't know what it was, but I just said to one of the per people passing by, I said, I'm, a, I, I'm Ron, I'm a breast cancer survivor. They stopped dead in their tracks. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said, what? Yeah. what? I said, I'm, a, I'm a male breast cancer survivor. Oh, you are? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. You know, and they were happy to listen to me, and it, I, it, it always happened. Nobody's ever not not stopped. Mm -hmm. have, have you have you run into that too? I think, oh yeah, yeah that's the yeah, because that's the biggest thing is when um, people always feel like you're selling them something, right? Or they'll say, yeah. no, 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 we need to give our, our bracelets out for free, and they'll be like, uh, -uh I don't want it, I don't want it. And then when you tell the story behind it. People are more, you know, um, receptive um, yeah. to it, and I think that's the biggest thing people could buy in when you tell your story. Because I think um, a lot of times, even education with children, you know, is hard. We think about adults; we really ain't trying to hear nothing unless it has something to do with what we want to be done. But when you start to educate someone in the area, and they go, "Oh, okay," you know, that's yeah. a marketing technique. Really, it's kind of like you. You have their attention, so now go ahead with the story. But um, Ron, one thing I wanted to ask you, when you got your diagnosis, how did you tell your wife? Like, how was that that moment when you had to share with her? Or did you ponder it, or did she go with you? Or like, how was that moment when you said, like, oh, something's wrong, and you, did she go with you to the doctor? Uh, she, yeah, she went with me to get the mammogram and right away well this was another interesting thing and when i walked in there to the room the lady said the lady the lady didn't know who i was you know the nurse she said are you ashkenazi jewish by chance and i said yeah she goes oh you know your odds are pretty high for this i said really because you know i didn't know and she did the mammogram and she said you know she, she said the right breast is fine. She says we have an issue with the left breast. Well, yeah, that I knew that. So then they said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna want you to go to the next room and have a sonogram. And I said, okay. And so I told my wife, I said, or they, I said, can you get my wife to come in the room with me? Because she's waiting outside. And they said, yeah, yeah, we'll get her. So she, my wife came in the room, who's a very, very strong woman. I mean, she's a pretty tough girl. And she was yeah. like crying almost, you know. She was on the verge yeah. of tears. And I said, oh, geez, you know, I guess I better be strong. So I just gave her a hug. And I said, yeah, you know, things are going to be all right. You know, I mean, I was scared yeah. too, but I didn't want to let her know I was. So anyway, um, uh, I was told after the biopsy that they would, it was going to be five or six days and they were going to call me. And my doctor called me like four days before that. It was like eight in the morning or seven in the morning. I, first thing I got out of bed and he said, Ron, I'm sorry. I just, I wanted to let you know. Uh, I just seen the preliminary report and you have cancer, you know, breast cancer. 
and he said, I didn't want you to have to wait around and hear it from, you know, the hospital people. So I, at that moment, I, I told my wife, but um, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was tough on her, but she, uh, you know, we were kind of prepared for it, you know? Yeah. It wasn't like this mystery, you know, we, we, we knew it was a possibility. But in the back of my mind, I was always hoping it was gonna be scar tissue or something like that. But yeah, it, 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 was, it was tough. But, yeah. but she, uh, she was pretty, she's good, yeah, she, she was very supportive. And, uh, and, and you know, once you get a cancer diagnosis, it, it pretty much changes your life around one way or another, it but does. it does, yeah. yeah. You know, right, yeah. Now, I, right now I'm on uh, tamoxifen therapy, you know, so the anti-hormone and yeah, that does, you know, that's not the most pleasant thing. I guess Kelsey could probably talk, talk to that. Horrible, I hate it, I hate it. You're still on yeah, it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm on it for 10 years. Me too, yeah, yeah. How does it affect your mood? You know, your disposition. I take antidepressants. I, I have to take antidepressants be, because of it. So yeah, it, it definitely impacts my mood. Um, you know, I, I liken it to, uh, you know, it's almost like it's like, it's a mixture between chemo and birth control or something. You know, it's like, I call it chemo light. Um, and I don't like hormonally, I'm just very different. Like, I even feel like my personality has just changed like a lot a lot since this has all happened to me too it's like everything has just changed but yeah I don't you know um when it comes to my hormones and, and things like that like it's it's a it's a different ball game it's just a diff, it's a different ball game and you know it's funny I was talking to a group about like oh like some girls were saying oh it cleared up my skin and I'm like I wish it would have cleared my up completely you know right. and it's like and I deal with like ovarian cysts that's like one thing that I get um with tamoxifen um definitely have some bone and joint issues too um I just actually got done yesterday was my last day with PT so I had like sciatic nerve issues and then it's like tied in with the bursitis and it, it's like it's just been awful. It's been awful. So, and I get real fatigued too. Like I'm real tired. So I take it at night and then I sleep through, you know, through my dose. And then when I get up in the morning, I usually feel better, but like sometimes I'll wake up and I'm just like crazy nauseous in the morning where I'm just like, you know, I have to like, I work, um, I'm working like a 40 hour week position right now. So sometimes I'll have to like call my manager and just be like, okay, like I'm super nauseous. I don't feel good. So it, it comes, it comes in waves. Yeah. I, it's but, funny that you mentioned the sciatic because I had a huge sciatic problem in, uh, in January. And wow. I, don't, I don't know if it's related to that or not, but uh, it, I had I was going through PT like you probably were, and it winds up I, I don't think the exercises were helping me at all. I think they were making the situation worse. Oh my gosh! See, yeah. I I was lucky. Like it was I went and saw an orthopedic surgeon, and my L one was like slightly out of place. So he's like, "Let's get you into physical therapy." So it was throwing everything off. So it's. Like, and then that's scary too, because that's a common place that breast cancer will metastasize to is the lower back. So it's like, you know, when these, when these things happen, like when you, you know, deal with the collateral damage of cancer and then, you know, the collateral damage that's tied in with tamoxifen, it, it, it can ring off all these alarms of like being scared that it's coming back in some capacity. It's yeah. terrifying. And we, uh, we talk about that a lot at the support group. Uh, there's a lot of the guys that are really, really shaky as far as recurrence. They're scared, and yeah. and we talk about how to how to work through that, you know. And a lot of it's uh, I just read a whole article about resiliency, and yeah. you have to be resilient. And you know, I I've kind of I, I hate that. Well, I put it this way. I put it in the Lord's hands. You know, I'm not going to sit here and worry about it. 
whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And uh, Ron, uh, I'm just Ron, not gonna Ron, can you hear me? Yeah. That is a key thing that I tell any and everybody. Like, so I, so one of my um, followers asked me this today. She said, being that you had it twice, do you ever worry about getting it a third time? You know what I told her, Ron? No. Why would I worry about it? I already kicked cancer's butt twice. I mean, what's the worst can happen? I live or I die, right? But I'm going to live until something else happens. Because in between time, you're yeah. mental. Your mental is so important. Oh, yeah. And if we are feed ourselves before a, a, a diagnosis comes, then we set ourselves up because our, our mental is so strong. So if every day we're worried about, oh my God, I got a bump, I got a bruise, what is this, what is that? We're feeding our mind that now cancer is back, right? So right. I will tell anyone, you're absolutely right. We can't just sit by and say like, oh my goodness, uh, I'm dying again or something's gonna happen. Don't put that in the atmosphere. We, gotta, we know we are warriors, we know we're fighters. We may not ask for the diagnosis, but we got it. And so we have to learn how to manage and cope with it. And at the same time, like you said, it gives me joy to have people on the show. It gives me joy so we can tell our stories because some people have lost hope and we are their hope. So when I hear your story, it makes me smile. Even at times you're telling a story, it makes me smile because I'm like, man, you're going to give so, and so many people hope because they look at their situation and they say, oh man, my situation is horrible. And then you hear somebody else's story. And you're like, it's really not that bad. But you know what? Ron made it. So I know I can do it too. So yeah. I'm sitting over here every time I hear you talk because I'm like, yes, Ron, yes. yes. <laughs> it's, it, it's given me, uh, I would say, new courage. Like right. you know, I'll try new things. I mean, we went out <laughs> West and we did some really crazy stuff you know with jeeps and we were out in the middle of nowhere and right, you know, right. <laughs> i'm thinking i'm really out of my comfort zone but then i thought to myself hey i i've been through cancer you know right you can't right. Be, it's no big deal you know if i can if i can go through that you know i can go through anything yeah. so that yeah so and it makes you good. live again because we're so fearful of things like we're fearful of people we're fearful of what is going to happen when you face death it is like literally i'm living on the edge at all times because we know what it feels like to be in our beds and not be able to move or or get the diagnosis and your your mental is messed up right. so it's like we just live and we don't have time for people to their feelings what you think we, i don't care i'm like look what's the worst that can happen yeah <laughs> and that's exactly. With me, even though I, physically I have not been affected, my mother and my aunt have been affected by it. But being around and being in this group has made, has gave me, given me courage to do other things as well. Because when I sit here and I look at um, Kathy and Kelsey, which I've been with all the time, then seeing you, Ron, you guys look great. And for me, it's not being a survivor. And I know y'all hear, oh, you don't look sick. You don't look this. And then when I hear your story, it's like, oh, I have aches and pains. Oh, I feel this <laughs> and I feel that. But yet, I'm still smiling. Right. What gives me the right to feel like, okay, I'm scared to do this. Why, why would I take a chance on that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, but I will say that it's hard sometimes, though. You know, like, it's a really, like, it can be, like, when, when I, I call this, like, the dark night of the soul. And I think... I have to, I have to gather that like at least 65% of survivors and, and patients, I would say patients go through this in general, where it's like one thing after the next seems to kind of go wrong and go bad. And that happened to me, like after treatment was actually over, like treat, like treatment wasn't the hard part. It was post-treatment that got real bad. So it's like that collateral damage where it, it can happen all at once and so badly that you really do feel like, you know, it is not worth it. And I have been going through so much already why am I going through this next thing and then complaining about that? So we go through that same exact thing, but I will totally, totally say that like when it comes down to it, it's like, you know, we all, we all go through the, the rain, you know, we all go through the rain and it's like, 
you know, you, you've been through a lot in your life too, you know, to, yeah. to, where you can look at yourself and be like, gosh, you know what? Like I did that. I accomplished that. I went through that. I persevered through that, you know, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's just a different hand that's yeah. dealt, yeah. but, but it, but it takes me time. It takes me time sometimes to like actually have to sit there and write down my wins. Like if I'm in a bad, funky mind state, because even cancer, because sometimes can lead you back into that dark, you know, that dark place that, that can be really tough to get out of. So it's, it's hard. It's hard, but yeah, get that book of wins. Oh my God. I want you to do that. Yeah. And I think that's important because a lot of times, um, people, cause even with, I wrote my scars, people, it started off with people like, Oh, it's only for breast cancer. And so we start talking about invisible scars. And I think a lot of times that's depression, right? That's anxiety. Right. Yeah. That's suicidal thoughts. And I'll tell anybody, once you go through cancer and people are fearful to say it, man, your mental is messed up. You're like, I'm here. I don't want to be here. And before I got chemo, I was like, God, just take me out now. Cause I don't want to, I don't even want to go through this road. And it is. You think about suicide. You think about uh, how am I going to live? Why am I living through this point to get chemo again? Right. But I think when you tap into your faith, the spirituality side, not to anybody, whatever that looks like to you, meditation, if you're like your, your sage or whatever, you tap into that side and then you find your peace. And once yeah. you tap into your peace, it is so different because you're starting to say, man, this person beside me didn't go through cancer, but you know what? They have a story too. Right. And that story, we go through the same signs and symptoms. You're stressed out. I got anxiety. I'm depressed. It's the same thing. It's just we, we have different stories. Right. Right. So, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. again, is when we talk about it, when we be real and have those real conversations that's hard to have, um, yeah. we can help somebody out. Definitely, because it all ties into one another. <laughs> And every conversation we have, I just try to figure out how it ties into everything. And like you were just speaking on, regardless of uh, if you went through cancer or any other trauma in your life, this group help this group helps people. It helps you tap into, okay, I can be stronger, I can get through this, I can be a better person, or whatever the case may be. So that's why I really love it. Like it has this group has given me so much courage. Like I started a long time ago, I did cosmetology, or I am a cosmetologist. I'm a nurse as well, but I did the cosmetology prior. Now, I've started up doing nails and hair again, but I'm pushing harder now than I ever was before, you know, to because I'm like, why am I scared to leap out on faith to do this and do that? Um, if God has got me this far, he's going to keep me going further. If one you're you're tapping happy your inner divinity. Right. Yes. Yeah. And Kels, this is a good time to talk about it. Before we talk about what we have going on, because you know we can talk all day, and Ron, you're welcome <laughs> to come back anytime. I got some wonderful uh, shirts, and it is for um, Survivor on Purpose. I promised everybody I would send them some shirts. And so <gasps> if, if you have been on the show in any type of way, we have surprises that will be going out the second week of October. Um, and we have all different colors. Ron is just not pink. <laughs> I know blue lives matter too. Blue dots matter. So. Yeah, you know that's a that's a big that's a big thing. You know we're trying to degender this thing. Yes, yes, that's what I was about to say. So yeah, uh, anybody who knows me, um, pink does not represent for me cancer because I don't think anything cute about cancer. But I can't knock the pink because. It, it, it does have its place when it comes to cancer. Oh, yeah. However, I, I would love to change the color to blue or orange or something that represent a cool oh, can you see? Can you see my shirt? Oh, yes, Ron. Okay, I'm going to steal it. <laughs> I'm going to steal it and put it on the shirt because I want to represent both together. And I don't know what pink and blue makes together, but it's going to be some kind Purple. of... Purple. Purple? That's a common color, so common. Okay, purple. Can you guys give me a minute because I want to go get get a prop, okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. so give, We're going to give me a minute. A little bit. Okay. okay. So, Kels, while Ryan's going to get his prop, his propaganda, listen, mm -hmm. let's tell everybody about what we have going on, which 
goes into kind of your your passion, you know, and your purpose. And so yeah. you want to tell people what we decided we're going to do on Wednesdays at 7, every night, Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> we are going to start talking some pretty resilient stuff. We're going to start talking about business. We're going to talk about your business. <laughs> And this is important, though, because yes. um, I know I have said so many times that if you can find what your passion is and that you love it, then you can capitalize off of it and make money because going through cancer, your life changes. And so noticing that um, through pain comes your purpose, right? And it doesn't feel like a job, mm -mm, right? Not at all. <laughs> and so we want right? to teach survivors not only for breast cancer, for any trauma, right? And any walk of life, right? How to turn what you love, your passion into a business. And um, if people don't know, and you're just tuning in for the first time, you are our partner when it comes to marketing and business. And we want to make this every Wednesday um, a business venture. That sounds great to yeah. me. Yes, I'm and excited. so... We want to talk about your your wins, what your your challenges are, any questions that you might have. So, um, so for uh, people who are who are wondering, um, so pretty much my background was always in sales and marketing, and then in 2018, I went to the Young Survival Coalition's yearly summit and saw there were all these companies that that had sprouted up uh, because of breast cancer, and I just thought, wow, like turning pain into purpose is such a novel concept. Like, I love that. And why don't people yeah. know that there's all these organizations that help one another and, uh, you know, that, that perhaps there's money that needs to be better allocated towards, you know, survivor owned businesses and all this stuff. So um, that was the basis of my initial podcast. And so, you know, since I'm continuing it on with the same theme of trauma as well, where I'm, you know, going to be talking about how people turn their, their pain into that purpose. And my, my background currently, I am a brand manager for a health and nutrition company. So um, I have extensive marketing knowledge, but I do have firsthand knowledge with starting an open. So currently, I'm helping um, a few local clients here in the Toledo, Ohio area, which is awesome. Um, I'm helping a, um, and she's actually one of my friends. She's one of my dear friends. Her name is Lauren. Uh, she is opening up a salon, and I'm helping her with that process. So those are the kinds of things that I do. I, I answer those kinds of questions to the best of my ability. So, um, you know, anybody who wants to come and, and I, you know, do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching um, where, you know, I can either help with the mindset aspect of things because that is really important. Um, sure. But then also I can help people launch businesses from like a technical standpoint as well. So that is, you know, that's my specialty. I'm really passionate about, you know, people practicing resiliency through turning in you know their their pain into something and alchemizing it into something beautiful that's going to help others you know what if your pain is healing the pain of somebody else in the world you know that is like turning turning that it's it's just a beautiful thing and 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 it's it's had a lot of ups and downs you know it's it's a hard thing to do it's not an easy track to take but it, it, it's worth it. So, you know, I definitely recommend anybody who's interested to, to come by and then eventually we'll have guest speakers talking about various aspects of business and, you know, what, what they do and some tips and, and tricks and things like that, because you got to wear a lot of hats. So that is, that's my little deal. <laughs> yeah, it's important. And, and then, um, Ron's going to, you know, do his grand reveal of his surprise. <laughs> Woo I can't wait to see it. Well, <laughs> This is kind of okay, this is this is uh, this is our our T-shirt. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Down just a little yeah. bit. Go, go down, down a little bit or up. Either or we can't see down, it. Down, down, down. <laughs> there we yeah, go. There we go. <laughs> okay, and then this is the back. It says, "Guys, don't be don't afraid to touch yourself." Male Breast Cancer Coalition. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. Okay, so, Ron. So we want ten of your shirts, Ron. Put it up so we can order ten of your shirts, so we can put it in our packages. You can, you can order all the shirts and, and caps you want. We have we have these wristbands. I'll 
Get, give me your information in the chat box and I'll send you some of these and I've got pins. Uh, okay. No problem. So anyway, uh, our guys are wearing these shirts around the country. And just to let you know, you'd be surprised how many people tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, is that a joke? Uh, Seriously. That's crazy. You know what our guys, you know what our guys do? They lift what? the shirt up and they show them their scar. Yep. And you, know, and, and you know what, all, all those people who, who, who say that, you know, that nasty stuff, they apologize profusely and they go, I'm sorry I had and no idea. Should. But you know what, hey, it's one-on-one -on -one and, you know, it's just like Sabrina said, if I help one person, fine, I'm happy, you know, so, yeah. And that's what it's about, right? So I think education, Yeah. education is important and sometimes um i was getting mad with a, a person i ain't gonna say their name i'm still kind of upset with them but when it comes to mental health right um it's just geared to my heart because that's what my background is with counseling and a person had to pull me aside and say look sometimes people are not educated in the area so you give them a pass because you educate them first, but if they're still ignorant, then it's a problem. So I think education, Ron, what you're doing is putting it out there so people can start a conversation, a conversation about it. That's what's important. And I look, I want your shirt. I'll make a crop top. <laughs> Put your information on that uh, on on the in the chat room, and I'll, I'll I'll make sure you get one. For sure. Okay. Well, we want to order them. I'm going to order them. So I'm going to email you. Them. Yeah. They're on our website. Um, oh, okay. Yep. But, then we, that's what we're going to do, Ron. Because we want to your, but, but I, if you could put your information on uh, in the chat room, on that the would chat. be good. Yeah. Kelsey, can you put it in there? You know, I don't know how to do that. Put it in the chat. <laughs> Just I, you know, so I'll end up ending the call or something and be like, where everybody go to? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I, I did put my information in the chat in the chat box. I don't know, you know, for whoever will see it. Yeah, Kel Kelsey's going to help us out with that because she's she's great okay. with, with that. There we go. Stuff. I got your website there. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so definitely, um, Ron, we've come to an end. <laughs> uh, uh, but, it's over? but yeah with this group we can talk forever it's, it's just like we're all know. family <laughs> it's not love because it, it's just like you know total strangers give you more love sometimes than your family <laughs> yeah really I just, really yeah, you're right that's how it is it's just because we can be real but i want to say um thank you thank you everybody for joining us and ron you make this extra special to be our our last show until January of 2021. Um, that sounds oh, so far wow. away, but so close. Um, we still have our Rebels, um, Real Talk Rebels International show. Um, we are international. And that's Saturday at noon, um, Eastern Standard Time, um, where we talk to people across the world. So I'm still excited that we'll be pushing through that. Wednesday will be our business Wednesday. So Join us still, anybody who has a business, if you want to talk a business, learn about business, we are going to- We're here. <laughs> yes, so thank you guys. I love y'all. You have an extended you. time. And now, Ron, everybody's going to go follow Ron. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Take Anything care. you want to end? Okay. You usually do it the best, so. Okay, so I always have to say this, Ron. Know that you're the best and better than the rest and nothing less because you were made by God. Peace, <laughs> love, and blessings, you guys. Thanks for joining. Peace, love. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye, <laughs> yes. Kelsey. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye, Instagram. You still watching <laughs> Facebook.